May you pray for us tonight. Uh, we're very tired. I'll be honest with you. I believe I'm more tired tonight than I was this morning. Uh, but I want to preach and that what God has given us. I've had this on my mind uh, for three or four days while we've been in revival. I've thought about this and uh, thought about... Uh, and I'm going to continue this as uh, uh, start a, uh, when I preached our last Sunday and that on plain preaching. And uh, we preached on separation, on a plain message on separation. Uh, and tonight I want to continue that thought uh, on a plain message in that on what the Bible says uh, and that about strong drink. Let's take our Bible tonight and go to the book of Proverbs uh, chapter 20 and verse 1. Uh, Proverbs, let's stand our feet if we would across the house. And now you pray for you preacher. I certainly desire the Lord's help tonight. Uh, I can tell you when uh, I need Him. I need Him all the time. Don't you misunderstand me at all. Uh, we need His touch, but I really need Him tonight. I need Him to help me. Amen. And I'll be honest with you. If you'd be honest with yourself, uh, you need Him to help you too. Amen. And uh, I want to know what the Bible says tonight and that about strong drink. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 20 and in verse 1, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You can be seated tonight. Heavenly Father, help us now for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, can I say tonight that uh, we're living in a time of, and living in a day when it seems like that, that drinking alcohol or selling alcohol is no longer a sin. Uh, it has become morally accepted. It has become socially accepted and it's become religiously accepted. And uh, that's the shame that we're in tonight to uh, us as a church and as God's people. Uh, uh, that it seems like that folk just don't care anymore about what the Bible says. Uh, and especially what the Bible says about drinking a uh, uh, strong drink. Uh, we was talking to the preacher up there uh, uh, in the mountains and he said uh, uh, he was talking about one particular church uh, and he was telling me and my wife he said this is no lie uh, he said this church he said they uh, sent their members will go out that to Las Vegas uh, and go out there and gamble said they'll take pictures of it uh, and post it on Facebook and that with uh, with drinks in their hand and uh, and that is the situation that we're in today and uh, that folk just don't seem to care. Uh, can I tell you tonight that God does care uh, uh, and that about whether you drink alcohol or not. Amen. God does care about His people uh, uh, and that living right. Uh, uh, God does care about those things tonight. And I believe if God cares, uh, uh, we ought to care. Amen. And so I want you to consider this tonight as we uh, begin to preach. And you pray that the Lord would be my helper tonight, okay? Uh, uh, first of all, let me say by way of introduction, uh, uh, when we look in the Bible uh, uh, and it talks about wine, uh, uh, does it always mean alcoholic beverage? Now, can I say tonight that no, it don't, that wine... Uh, is a generic term. Uh, wine uh, sometimes does mean it, and sometimes it don't. You have to uh, look in the text and that to understand that. Uh, when it talks about in the book of Genesis that uh, when Noah uh, uh, grew that vineyard and drunk wine uh, uh, and become drunk from drinking that wine, uh, then you could say, yeah, that that was probably, uh, uh, well, actually it's not probably, you could say without doubt, uh, if he drank it and got drunk, that it was an alcoholic beverage, amen. amen. But the Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, uh, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn uh, and thy wine and thine oil. Now let me say tonight that you don't gather wine and that off the vine tonight. Uh, uh, you gather grapes. And a lot of times, I won't say a lot of times, uh, sometimes when you see the word wine in the Bible, uh, it refers to three things. Uh, uh, one, it can refer to an alcoholic beverage. Uh, two, it can refer to grape juice. Uh, and three, it can even refer uh, and that to the grapes hanging on the vine. How do you know that? Uh, Isaiah chapter 65, Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine 
is found in the cluster. Uh, uh, listen, you know what he's talking about there? Grapes uh, that's hanging on the vine. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, Honor the Lord with thy substance, uh, and with the first fruits of all thine increase, uh, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses uh, shall burst out with new wines. You know, you can't get alcoholic beverage uh, out of the press tonight. Uh, you have to take that and make time uh, and that for it to firm in uh, uh, and to move itself right in the cup as the Bible uh, uh, talks about. Uh, and so we find that, uh, listen, first of all, wine uh, is a generic term. But when we look into the scripture right here in verse 20 or chapter 20 of uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, when it said that wine uh, is a mocker and strong drink is raging, uh, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise, he is referring uh, uh, to an alcoholic beverage. Amen. Well, preacher, you know the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, he turned uh, and that the water into wine down at the marriage of Canaan. Uh, friend, I'm going to tell you tonight, uh, I I believe on the authority of God's Word. Uh, listen to me now. Uh, uh, that that was just great juice. Now you believe what you want to tonight. Uh, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you. He said that wine is a mocker. Uh, and strong drink is a raging. Uh, and that it's deceptive. Uh, I don't believe the Lord Jesus done anything. Uh, uh, to deceive a man tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact. He said in the book of Matthew. Uh, Think not that I've come to destroy the law. Uh, uh, or the prophets. I've come not to destroy uh, but to fulfill John 8 said uh, and you shall know the truth uh, and the truth shall make you free uh, uh, John 14 and 6 Jesus said uh, I am the way uh, uh, the truth and the life uh, I believe tonight that friend uh, uh, Jesus don't want anybody to be deceived uh, uh, but wants them all to know the truth amen so I believe tonight when he turned that water into wine uh, over at the marriage time in Cana, uh, I believe uh, uh, that it was great juice. Say, man, you believe what you want to tonight. Uh, uh, but listen, you say, well, what about at the Passover? Uh, oh, that's simple right there. Uh, uh, listen, Exodus chapter 12 said that all leaven uh, had to be put out of the house. You can't have alcohol without leaven. That's yeast, by the way. Uh, and you can't do it. And so I find two times in the Bible when I believe that it's acceptable. Uh, if you'll let me say, I know of one time and possibly two, I'm still debating on some things uh, uh, about one of them. One of them is when somebody gets ready to die. In Proverbs chapter 31, he said, Give strong drink uh, unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Uh, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. I believe the scripture teaches us there at that point uh, as somebody's getting ready to perish uh, uh, that they would uh, get some peace. Uh, if you let me say that, and, I, and listen, I don't understand everything that I know about that passage, uh, uh, but I believe also in the book of 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, uh, Paul tells Timothy over there uh, uh, to take just a little wine for the stomach's sake uh, and thine often infirmities. And so we see it can be used for medicine, and I understand those things tonight. And I also understand that some folk like to self-medicate, and everybody's always got a runny nose if we ain't careful. Amen. Yeah, and uh, I'm just being careful tonight. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand, but I do know this. I do know this, that the Lord don't want us to drink and that alcoholic beverage. Number one tonight, uh, uh, the attraction in that alcohol. Why would folk uh, and not want to drink it? Why would folk and not want to drink it? Can I say that the world uh, uh, and that promotes uh, uh, it to be a great uh, and a grand thing? It promotes it to be a great and a grand thing. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, you look on TV everywhere you turn. Uh, uh, you see it on TV and on radio and on billboards uh, and in magazines everywhere you turn. Uh, uh, they promote. Everybody's always got a, a, a liquor drink or beer in their hand. Uh, and it always looks like a good time, don't it? Right. You ever noticed that? It always looks like they're having a great time and a, and a good time. And even my wife will make a statement. Uh, uh, sometimes you'll see a picture of it uh, and she'll say, Boy, that drink looks good, don't it? I always make them look good. But I mean, uh, uh, I could say some things there tonight uh, about my wife, but I, I have to hold her back, boy, I tell you. Now, if y'all believe that tonight, uh, got some stuff I need to say to you, you know. Uh, but listen tonight. 
They always make it look good. Yeah, always make it look pretty. And it uh, uh, always shows you a grand time that they're having. Uh, uh, but the devil never shows you in that the end uh, of anything. Uh, uh, can I say tonight that, friend, that it might be promoted as a great thing. It might look like a great thing. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand, uh, uh, first of all, we're to be separated and not out of the world. Uh, uh, but two, uh, uh, you need to understand it may look good, uh, uh, but there's always a bad ending that comes with it. And I'll deal with that here in a minute. Not only is it promoted to look good, uh, uh, but you say, well, preacher, everybody else is doing it. And I'm talking about the attraction uh, and that to alcohol. Yeah. Everybody else is doing it, preacher. Uh, uh, there's folk at other churches. Now, I don't care what they're doing at other churches. Amen. Come on. Amen. I don't care what other so-called Christians uh, Amen. are doing. I don't believe you can be a Christian and drink liquor. Hey. Amen. Uh, hey, when this goes on the radio, uh, you can write me at Unity Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1268, uh, Athens, Tennessee, 37371. Amen. Yeah, come on. I want them to get that. I want them to understand that tonight. Listen, uh, I don't believe you can be a Christian and drink. Hey, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. Amen. Amen. Uh, and folks say, well, uh, uh, you know, preacher, everybody looks so good. Uh, everybody else is doing it. Uh, a little bit won't hurt. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, a little bit will tonight. Uh, a little bit's going to hurt you uh, uh, because, friend, it will lead you in the wrong direction, uh, going down the wrong path, uh, and it's going to get you. Amen. How do you know? Wine is a mock and strong drink is a raging. Uh, and whosoever is what? Deceived thereby is not wise. Folk think they can tangle with that stuff. Uh, but I'm telling you anything that perverts judgment, uh, I don't want it in my body. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, when I was in the hospital I, I, that first time and as it's shooting me up, I, I, friend, I was trying not to. I, I, I didn't, uh, hey, listen, uh, it make you feel good. I, I, and I didn't want it. I mean, you not want to feel better? I did, but friend, I know. I, I've seen too many people uh, and that get hooked uh, on them drugs uh, when they did need them. Uh, and when they come on and when they didn't need them, uh, they still wanted it. Amen. I didn't want to go down that road. Well, preacher, everybody else is doing it. I don't care what anybody else is doing. Ain't that what you tell your children? Yeah, come on, right. Amen? Come on. You all raised young'uns, all that you have. Ain't that what you've told or you're telling your children now? It don't matter what everybody else is doing. I say it. You know what? God don't care what anybody else is doing. He cares about what you're doing tonight. Amen. Amen. He cares about what you're doing. I've said in the book of Exodus chapter 20, I'm talking about the attraction uh, of alcohol tonight. Uh, that shall not follow a multitude uh, uh, to do evil. And so, friend, we have no business in that following after. If you look back on that church covenant, and I know that church covenant is not Scripture tonight, but it tells us not to drink it nor to sell it. The Bible tells us, I believe it is, over the book of Habakkuk, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth Amen. the bottle to him, and makest him drunk, and also uh, that thou mayest look on their naked. Hey, listen, God said don't even sell it. Don't sell it. Everywhere you look on TV, you, you can find it, boys. Looking good. Looking good. Huh, nobody cares. Nobody cares anymore. That's just a bygone there, a preacher. Preachers don't preach against it anymore. Very important tonight. You ought to be teaching your kids. Amen. Don't you fool with this stuff. It's going to get you. You young people need to listen to me tonight. Don't mess with that stuff. It's going to get you. Hey, listen, strong drink in the Bible. The Bible's against it tonight. You say, well, why would people, why, why is the attraction there? Oh, it'll make you feel good. There's no doubt about that. If you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 31, I believe it is, and I've already quoted part of it. Uh, you know what he said? He, he, he said over here, uh, he said, Give him strong drink and him is ready to perish. And wine and those that be of a heavy heart, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. You know, it just, it, it, it'll, it, it'll take uh, everything away from you if you'll let it tonight. Oh, it'll knock you out. But you know what? There is not only an attraction to it. I don't want anything that's going to mess with my mind. Amen. Come on. I like being in my right mind. Amen. I do. I've been to, I have, there are times that I have not been in my right mind. Yep. I love being in my right Amen. mind. I 
wouldn't want to be out of my mind tonight. There's an attraction to it. So preacher, we got all these problems and we've got every, the world's coming in on top of us. Take it to the Lord. Amen. A lot of people want to run to the bottle. They need to run to the altar instead of run to the bottle. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it'll make your problems go away for a little while. There's, there's no argument, to, or so it'll make it seem like it'll go away. You know, it is deceiving tonight. I have a preacher friend of mine, before he got saved, uh, he'd tell you that he used to keep a beer on his nightstand because he said God somewhere in the middle of the night would wake me up and convict me of my sin. And he said I'd crack that beer and drink it and go back to sleep. He said that's the only way I could get away from God was to do that. Now what's that tell you tonight about some things? This same preacher, I, I can remember when he had cancer, and uh, he, he told this. He told me this, and then he finally told his church this. Uh, the first time he had cancer, he, uh, uh, I mean, it got him so worried and so messed up. And, and boy, this just goes to show you how human we really are. And one night about one o'clock in the middle of the night, that thing was bothering him so bad. Uh, and he couldn't get no rest and couldn't get no peace. And, and I it just seemed like God wasn't there. He said, I got in my truck and I drove down to the gas station uh, in the middle of the night. And he said, I walked back there to that cooler uh, and I put my hand on that door. And got ready to open it. And he said, I looked at that. And he said, I turned around. And I went back out there to my truck. He said, I, I went back out there and I just sat down and I just cried for what I about done. And he said, then I went back home and went to bed. Huh? Listen to me tonight. There is an attraction to it. He knew, he told me, he said, I knew that I could get some peace if I went and done that. Or at least he thought he could. Amen. But it wouldn't have been the peace that he needed. But you know what God done? God gave him some peace. He said, I sat down in the truck and cried and went back home and went right to sleep. Amen. Ain't that amazing tonight? I told God how sorry he was. But there's an attraction. There seems to be an attraction for some reason. Seems like we would know better, don't we? Seems like we'd know better, but yet uh, folk have trouble with that. Number two, uh, uh, in the attraction to it, take your Bible and go to the book of Proverbs chapter 23. Just turn over just a, a few verses or a few chapters there in Proverbs 23 and verse 29. The Bible said, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to see mix the drink. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup. And when it moveth itself aright, at the last uh, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. I don't know why you don't fool with it. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I wake? And then he makes his statement at the very end, I will seek it yet again. Can I say tonight, not only is there an attraction and that to alcohol, but there is an addiction to it. It is very addictive. I mean, there's a lot of things in that that becomes addictive and to that to our body. Uh, listen, I smoked cigarettes for a long time, it seems. Uh, and them th I remember the, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, I can remember the first time that I ever really tried to quit uh, uh, and thought that it was just going to be easy. Uh, and I remember I'm not going to smoke. Uh, uh, and my, my, I like to claw my eyes out, you know. Why? I was addicted to it, you know. Amen. I mean, there's an addiction to that nicotine. There is an addiction, uh, uh, friend, in that to dope tonight. I mean, there's a lot of folk that's just looking for their next fix, but there's addiction uh, in that to alcohol. I remember when I worked a public job and I worked over at the spa company, uh, when I went out every morning, uh, I started at 7 o'clock in the morning. As always, uh, uh, one, a couple of departments that started about 6 o'clock, uh, and I'd walk through there and I'd get my list and that ready for the day. And, and I walked through one department and uh, there's a little short Mexican back there. And you know, I'm short and he stood about this tall. And man, he would work. He was a worker. 
And uh, every morning when I would go through there, and it didn't matter if it was uh, 10 degrees outside or 100 degrees, uh, sweat was just a pouring off him. Uh, and when you walked in that department back there, uh, it smelled like a brewery. Why? He, it was a pouring out of him. Amen. And I've seen him get the DT so bad where he was detoxing. I've seen him get the DT so bad that he would literally have to leave uh, and that go get him something to drink uh, and then come back to work. Yeah. And you know what? That led him to. Because when he come back, he could work. Yeah. And he was ready to go then. You say, why is that? Because his body had to have it. It had got used to it. Uh, it was something that it was addicted to. Uh, and right here in this chapter in Proverbs 23, uh, uh, he told us not to do it. Uh, he told us what was going to happen if we done it. Uh, uh, what the end was going to be. Uh, but yet the verse he said, Yet uh, I will seek it yet again. Knowing what's going to happen, but yet I'll keep after it. Men and women spend a lot of their time in that to make sure that they can get their next alcohol fix. Isaiah chapter 5 said, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. They say that's all they do. Amen. I remember there was another fellow that uh, we used to work with. I can't remember his name. I, uh, but he carried a little cooler with him there uh, uh, and kept it up there on his workstation. Uh, and you'd go by and every now and again uh, he'd have his back turned to you and he'd have to take a little drink uh, and put it back. And he had to have it. He was addicted to it. I wouldn't want anything to have that kind of control over me. I wouldn't. I'll be honest with you now. I wouldn't want anything except the Lord Jesus to have that kind of control over me. It's amazing tonight. It's amazing that folk get addicted to that stuff. I tell you, the Lord can help you with it if you own it tonight. Don't ever start it and you ain't got that problem. Amen. You say, well, preacher, we... Uh, you know, a lot of people, they always want to make excuses about things. Well, we, you know, well, we eat, you know, eat all this food. Friend, you'll die if you don't eat. Do you know that? Yeah. Man, are you that stupid tonight? Really? I mean, are you that dumb? Uh, to say that, you know, well, preacher, we're addicted to food. Sure, we're addicted to food. Amen. Our body's got to have it. Yeah. <laughs> Get tired of hearing dumb things sometimes. Amen. So that people can make their excuse and that to do their sin. Now, let me say this. Let me park right here and just say something oh. for a minute, okay? Now, we are gluttonous people sometimes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. We are gluttonous people. I mean, we, we do eat too much. Yeah, amen. We do. I don't, I don't know what the obesity rate is uh, in the United States, but, but I'll be honest with you, I, I, I do know one thing, that, that, that we do have the biggest portions amen. of just about any country in the world. Do you know that? When we sit down to eat. I mean, not, not only do we eat once, but sometimes we eat twice and, and, and three times. And you preach are included. Amen. Now let me say this, it does matter what you put into your body tonight. I'm going to preach on that sometime. I've got to get up the nerve and deal with some things in my heart first. Amen? Because when I'm going to preach on it, I'm going to deal with some stuff that I do. Yeah. Amen? That I do. And I want to get all that fixed before I deal with that. But I'll be, on, I'll be honest with you tonight, we put too much in our body uh, that it ain't made to go in it. Amen? It ain't made to go in it tonight. But number three, not only is there an addiction, not only is there an addiction and, and, and not only uh, is there an attraction, but then that stuff has an effect yes, tonight. Amen. Can I say that liquor and strong drink has an effect on us tonight? The Bible said that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. And so whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. It is very deceptive tonight. Do you know that? That stuff will deceive you. Yeah, it will. Do you know that it affects our judgment? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 31, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. 
Now, now some people say that King Lemuel was Samuel and that that would have been Bathsheba and that talking to him. I don't know if that's the truth or not. I've never got to the bottom of that. But I do know one thing. There was a king by that name and his mother was telling him uh, uh, not to be drinking wine and strong drink uh, uh, because she said, you're going to pervert judgment if you do that. You're not going to plead for those uh, uh, that need pleading. You're not going to decide uh, in the right uh, uh, if you're drunk. What was it that uh, that judge in Knoxville? Was it Knoxville that uh, uh, he he was on dope part of the time when he was on the bench? You remember that, man? You know what they've done? They're retrying his cases now. That's what they're doing. Why? Because they are afraid that he might have perverted the judgment of those uh, that had come before him, you see. The Bible said, lest they drink and forget the law. We seen that one Wednesday night, and I know I've made mention of this three or four times, and Brother Jeff stood right down here on top of the car, didn't you, Brother Jeff? And that was a sheet. Didn't you have a sheet holding it up to cover them up? Hey, was some boys blow. Was it a Wednesday night? I believe it was a Wednesday night. They drove out of the road right down here uh, in, in the churchyard. Uh, uh, and, and back in, 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 the old, in the old days, back in the old days, uh, uh, the road didn't go straight down here when you topped over the hill. Uh, the road turned left uh, and then it turned back to the right and come out uh, about another uh, uh, two or three hundred feet or may, maybe a hundred to two hundred feet uh, that direction. Come out down there. And uh, when they decided, I don't know, they, probably, they said they are making every bit of 70 to 80 mile an hour when they tried to make that turn down there. And uh, he couldn't make it. Then he hit another truck head on. Ain't that right, but if I remember the story right? And, and you know why he done all that? Because he was drunk. He was drunk. That, that liquor, whatever he was drinking, whether it's liquor or beer or whatever he was hopped up on, deceived him to make him think that he could do what he done. And you know what it done to him? It killed him. You see. That stuff is very deceptive. It will make you pervert judgment. It will make you uh, pervert the law. You see. I listened to one preacher talk. He was a full time evangelist at this time. And he said he was in his bus headed down the interstate. And he said there was a, a group full. I might have told you this story too. I don't know. But a group full of of a, a teenager, some in the bed of a truck, uh, and they'd graduated high school, and they'd been out partying that night. And they'd had a big time, uh, and some way, somehow, he said, I was behind them, uh, and something happened. I don't know what happened, what they'd done, uh, uh, but that truck started flipping, uh, uh, going down the road. Uh, they was all drunk. Uh, uh, he said, I got that bus stopped and got over on the side of the road. Uh, he said, I went down there, uh, and he said, I got one of them boys, he said, uh, that flew out of that truck, said he felt like jello all over where he broke all his bones. Uh, uh, and said, I, I told him that I was a preacher. Uh, I told him what he, I uh, asked him about the Lord. Uh, and he said, preacher, uh, uh, just don't let me, uh, and that meet God with liquor uh, on my bread. That's what he begged for. Don't let me meet God with liquor on my bread. And he said, I was sitting there holding him uh, uh, when he died. Yeah. It'll cause you to pervert judgment. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, you need to stay away from that stuff. It's dangerous tonight. Well, why would you want to take anything into your body uh, uh, that that's dangerous tonight? Do you know it'll cause you to do things uh, uh, that you normally wouldn't do? Huh? Amen. And uh, it sure will. You take, take your Bible and go to the book of Genesis chapter 19. I want to show you something tonight. Genesis chapter... Who in the right mind? Who in the right mind would have took these curves? Most of y'all, I remember how they were. Uh, but, but who would have took them curves at 70 mile an hour? That's hard to take at 35. Amen. Let alone at 70. But Genesis 19. Genesis 19. Look in verse 32. Now I'm talking about the effect that it has. It'll cause you to do things you normally wouldn't do. All right, Lot has been brought up and that out of Sodom. His wife has, she looked back, she's turned into a pillar of salt. By the way, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Amen. Why do you reckon he said that? Sir, now think about that. Are you listening tonight? 
Remember Lot's wife. Everything that she loved and that she had. Boy, I'm telling you, the Lord had sent them angels down there to get them up out of the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, took them by the hand and drug them out. And He gave them one thing. He said, don't look back. And she turned and looked back uh, to Sodom down there, the land uh, uh, that looked like the garden of God. The Bible said at one point, uh, uh, she, because everything that she had was back down there. And she looked back and God turned her into a pillar of salt. No man having put his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hey, we don't need to be looking back. We need to be going forward. All right, look with me. Here we go. The Lord's got, got Lot and that out of the land of Sodom. He's got two of his youngest daughters with him. I believe they're over here. Uh, uh, the Bible said that they uh, dwelling in a cave. And it said he and his two daughters in verse uh, 30, verse 31. And, and the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us. After the manner of all the earth, come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father, let us make him drink wine this night also. And go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. Let me stop and ask this question. Where did they get the wine at? Yeah. When they're living up here in the cave, being brought up out of the land of Sodom, where did they get the wine at? I believe they brought it with them. Amen. I don't know. I can't prove it. I'm just asking you. Verse 36. Oh, well, verse 35. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. And thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn by her son. And called his name Moab. And the same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger she also bare a son. And called his name uh, uh, Benami. Uh, the, name, the, the same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. What's happened right here? They got him drunk and committed this sin with him. Now why did they have to get him drunk to do that? I don't believe Lot would have never done that had he not been drunk. Now think about that for just a second. Let that, let that sink into Look at the sin that he literally committed with his own two daughters uh, uh, because uh, uh, he was drunk. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 33. It said this, Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Now talking about being drunk, you know, going after that mixed wine when it moveth itself aright in the cup. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Men, it'll have us looking at uh, women uh, that ain't our wife. Amen. Can I tell you not, can, I'm talking about the effect that it has. It's, it's affected a lot of homes, hasn't it? Amen. It's on. ruined a lot of marriages, hasn't Come it? On. Huh? Come because on. men's drunk. Because women have drunk. It's caused them I to look at other men in a wrong way. Ain't I telling the truth tonight, church? Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, there's an effect. Uh, that have, hey, if you go back over and look at Noah in Genesis chapter uh, uh, 9, you'll find out that the Bible said in verse 20, I believe it was. Let me go back here and look. Genesis 9, where are we at? It said, And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and he was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. He was laying there naked, you see. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went in backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not the nakedness, uh, saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from the wine, see, from his wine, and knew what his younger son 
had done unto him. Now a lot of people think that uh, they had uh, uh, committed some kind of uh, sodomite act. I really don't know what happened right there. But they done, he done something to him. Uh, uh, but all that was brought on or started uh, and that for the very fact that Noah was drunk. There's nothing good comes out of this stuff. I don't care how you look at it. Amen. It's ruined a lot of good moms and dads. It's ruined a lot of good kids. A lot of good teenagers. And all it does is just bring sorrow and judgment. If we go back to the book of Proverbs chapter 23. And here's what he's saying in verse 29. Who hath woe and who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed, uh, mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last, not at the beginning, at the last, you see, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. We looked at that. Uh, I mean, hey, it'll make you say things uh, that you normally wouldn't say. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Back and forth. Back and forth. I believe the Bible talks about at a time uh, uh, when the earth is going to be shaken uh, on its foundation uh, and it's going to reel uh, like a drunkard. You ever seen a drunk try to walk? Amen. They can't. Right. They stagger and they, hey, listen, uh, I seen my uncle one time. He used to uh, work with us uh, and I seen him come in and he had I mean, it had been a rough time for him at work. Uh, and, and, and he had been known to drink a little bit back in the day. Uh, and I hadn't known him to drink in years and years. Uh, and I remember he come in one day. I was walking out the front door going to get in my truck. And I met him on the way out. Uh, uh, and he had been, he had left work uh, and got him something to drink. Uh, uh, and he was on his tiptoes. And it was back and forth. Seen that with my own two eyes. Huh? There's an effect to that stuff. You read on. They have stricken me. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I failed it not. When shall I wake? Reckon when folk are going to wake up from that stuff. I'll seek it yet again. 2 Peter 2 and verse 22, But yet it's happened according to the true Proverbs, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed her wallowing in the mire. We're going to go right back to it. Can't get away from it. Can I tell you tonight that liquor and alcohol brings nothing but sorrow. Amen. It brings nothing but woe. What did it say right here? Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who has grief and misery and sadness and loss of happiness? Who has that stuff? Well, I'm telling you folk that just deal with this stuff and go, well now preacher, we, we, just, we just have a little bit of it. We just have, I believe the Bible teaches us that it's wrong, whether it's a little bit or a whole lot. Tonight. Amen. I believe it's wrong. I don't believe you ought to have it in your house. I don't Amen. think you ought to be around it. I don't think you ought to have anything to do with it. Contentions. Who hath babbling? You can't even talk right. Do you know that you can't talk right? I mean, you get on that stuff. Uh, I've seen them boys, their tongue be swelled sometimes uh, and their speech be slurred. Uh, uh, you can't understand what they're saying. I remember one time we was on a mission trip. We was up around Battle Creek, Michigan. It's back when I was about 15 or 16 years old and uh, we went up there to help a church and, <clears throat> and I remember uh, where we were at was next to a park and they had a, a lake out there and had that park out there next to the lake and there were some boys met over there and boy, they, they were drunk and they got to fight. And uh, I remember uh, the pastor of that church and it was a little house church. They had like a den out attached to the church or to the house, and 
And uh, I remember just as plain as Ray and had seats set up and, and uh, had a stand up front. And, and I remember uh, my preacher and the preacher of that church went over and got one of them boys. I don't know how they ended up with him. But when he come in, he was drunk. And they set him down at the kitchen table right there. And they began to talk to him about the Lord. And he began to sober up. Now that was amazing. Looking back on it, that was amazing. To watch what the Lord was doing right there. Sobered him up sitting there. Talking about the Lord. And I reckon that old boy got saved. Amen. Sitting right there at that kitchen table. He said, who hath babbling? Wounds without cause. I remember I worked with a fellow one time by the name of Sam. He didn't work there too long. But I remember he come in one Monday morning and he was beat to death. Beat to death. Wounds without cause. He'd been out drinking. And I don't know if they rolled him or not. In other words, beat and took his money, you see. And he said, all I was trying to do was get over on my belly and hide my face. Wouldn't that be a horrible place to be? I mean, go out drinking, looking for a good time, going to have a good time. And the next thing you know, you've got wounds without cause. But it's all I ever mean, seen. Redness of eyes. It affects us physically. You better stay away from that stuff. Amen. Amen. You know what affects your health? Right. You drink long enough and enough, you get cirrhosis of the liver. Amen. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. You drink enough, it's going to cause problems. And not only that, let me tell you this, you want to talk about causing problems, you drink and drive, you're really going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. If they catch you, they will take you to jail. They will take your driver's license away from you. Amen. And you're liable to kill somebody or kill yourself. Amen. If not both. Ain't that something tonight? Do you know what to keep you from the Lord? You know, I told you a few minutes ago about that preacher before he got saved he used to keep one on his nightstand just to get away from the Lord. Isaiah chapter 5. I believe it's Isaiah 5. The Bible said, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may fall a strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. And the harp, and the vial, and the tabret, and the pipe, and wine are in their feet. Now notice they got all that music there too. Well, music plays a big part in a lot of things, don't it? Amen. Give that a little consideration. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. All they're concerned about is that good time and about that drinking and carrying on. All that what we'd call rebel rousing and all that mess. The Bible said in verse 13, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and the multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure in their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. You know what they said? You know what he said right here? He said, all they're doing is chasing that liquor. All they're doing is chasing that strong drink. And said, they've not thought anything about the Lord. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not thought anything about it. There's a lot of people out in the world just having a good time, ain't they? I guarantee you, these folk have to recover right now from putting on a two-day drunk. And they're sobering up right now enough so that they can go back to work tomorrow morning. Amen. That's the truth. They started drinking Friday night and they've been drinking ever since. And they probably quit last night and they're trying to sober up right now. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be a horrible lie? Yeah. I, I would hate ever... I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, the high... I would... I mean, to drink stuff that's, that's going to give you a hangover. 
When I preach, I don't drink enough. You know, I, ain't no, I don't drink enough. Drunk. You don't need to be drinking at all. Amen. Amen. Put you down the wrong path, won't it? The Lord said right here that they won't consider Him. And He said because of that reason, because they were chasing the wine, and they were having a great big time, and chasing that strong drink, He said, therefore my people are gone into captivity. I'll tell you one reason we probably ain't going to have a crowd around here. Because I'm going to preach on things like this. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I'd love to have a crowd. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'd, I'd love to preach to a crowd like this. Amen. But you know, you're, you're going you're gonna, to uh, get them out. You're going to worm them out eventually. You know. People don't consider the work of the Lord. I don't know how you can when you're too concerned about drinking and having that good time which is going to turn bad. But I'm glad of one thing tonight. Number four, there is absolutely, absolutely forgiveness for it tonight. Amen. First Corinthians six. Know you not that the right, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. He said, "Be not deceived." Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And then he said in verse 11, And such were some of you, but ye, were wa but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You can get saved out of that stuff. And get forgiven for that Amen. stuff. Amen. Ain't that wonderful tonight? Amen. 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 Boy, I'm telling you, God wipes the slate clean. Yeah. You ain't that no more. He takes Thank that God. away. Thank Thank God. God, let me say, if you sang tonight, fooling with it, you just need to stop. Amen. You just need to stop. I, I believe there's some safe folk messed up in that mess. We have no business in it tonight. God's people have no business in it. Let's bow our heads. Across the house tonight.